lot of folks gone this morning on vacation and one thing then another. Uh, pray they'll all get back in here all right. Let's take our Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you know, this is a book where there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the church and God put it on Paul's heart to write him this letter, but it's to us too because uh, there's crazy stuff going on now too. And uh, um, of all the churches in the Bible, you wouldn't want to name your church. It would be Corinth, but I've seen them. I've seen them. Why anybody want to name them that? I don't know. More confusion, more false doctrine, more sin in the church than anyone in the Bible. Uh, but anyway, we're going to look at something in the middle of it here in chapter 12. And I want to bring you this truth that the Lord put on my heart the other day. And I, I need you to do me two favors. Uh, listen carefully. I'm going to start a little slower than normal. And then I want you to keep your Bibles open. So I'm going to point to some scripture as we go along. I don't usually do that on Sunday morning, but I'll do that today. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 Verse 14, look at verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. Now, hold your finger there just a second. Here's what that means. All of this you see right here is a member of my body. My hand is a member of my body. My leg is a member of my body. The body has many members, fingers, eyes, ears, you know, uh, toes, everything about us is a member of the body. Now here he's going to compare this body, our physical body, to the church being the body of Christ. Y'all, if you've been in church any time at all, you understand that we are Christ's body on this earth. You should know that. Now, look at verse four, uh, 15. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand. Don't you just love how plain, simple the Bible wrote? I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? So if your foot comes up one day and says, hey, I don't know how a foot would sound if he talked, but if your foot says, how come I'm not a hand? I'll say, because God made you a foot. Get down there and hold me up. That's my foot's job, is to hold me up, out of sight. You can't see my feet, but they're pretty. That's what the Bible says. I didn't write it. Go read it. Uh, the Bible said how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. Got you, didn't I? Uh, but, uh, uh, my, my foot here is uh, part of my body. My arm, part of my body. They can't get jealous of each other. Look here what it says. Uh, verse 16. If the ear shall say, can your ear talk? Well, if it could, and your ear said... Uh, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? So if your ear one day says, it's not fair, I can't see, your eye can look back and say, well, it's not fair, I can't hear. You hear, I'll see. We, we got too many ears trying to be eyes, <laughs> and, and a lot of churches got too many feet trying to be hands. We got a lot of, we got a lot of people trying to preach. It ain't called preach. We got a lot of people trying to sing. I better shut up, shut up right there. Uh, but, uh, you know, find out who you are and what you are and do it for the glory of God. That's what this is about. Look at verse number um, 17. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? What an illustration. What if this morning, what if this morning, you, you got through singing and somebody said, go in there and get the pastor. And four men went in there and carried out this eyeball about that big. Big giant eyeball. And set it down right here and says, all right, there's our pastor. Is that Humpty Dumpty? Is that, I mean, what is that? That's our pastor? If the whole body were an eye, it couldn't walk, it couldn't hear, it couldn't eat, it couldn't touch, it couldn't get nothing done. Listen, people, everybody don't have the same job, the same talent, the same abilities. We're all parts of his body. Look at the rest of that verse, how vivid an illustration. If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? What if you was just one big ear? 
<laughs> I know some people with one big mouth uh, and all ears, not, not much ears and all mouth. Uh, uh, I, I think some people think it's all mouth, one big mouth. You know anybody like that? Uh, but it said if you were just one big gigantic ear, you couldn't see. You see how simple that is? Where were the smelling? You couldn't smell nothing. I wish I couldn't last night. Verse 18. But now God hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members. That's what we are at Shining Light Baptist Church. We are many members, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee. Right? Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be feeble are necessary. Like your lungs, you know, like your heart. You can't even see it. It's got nothing to do with how pretty or handsome you are. Right, look here what it says about your comely, your pretty parts. Verse number 23 and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. That means the parts about you that's ugly is more useful than the parts that's pretty, and the parts that's pretty just for looks and don't serve much of a purpose. Verse 24, for our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should all have the same care one for another. It ought to be the goal of this church that all the members have the same care one for another. Not little cliques, not little, just certain little groups that the pastor hangs out with, not just little certain, you and your few little friends and heck with everybody else. It's supposed to be every member have the same care one for another. We got a ways to go, don't you think? Yes, sir. If it's our friends, we'll cut them slack. If it's people we don't like, I knew there's a hypocrite all along. That's what I'm talking about. Look at verse number 26. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. When Jeremy gets a Mustang sitting out there that looks like a pumpkin that costs more than the house, we should all rejoice with him. We got him with a Mustang out there that Richard Petty couldn't keep up with. That pumpkin sitting right out there. Look at it when you leave. And then we got Anthony, who's back in the junior church, who spray painted the front of his Honda this week. You know, it had a black hood. I thought it looked pretty good like that. White car, black hood. He, he spray painted it, and he spray painted his tires. That's pretty redneck when you spray paint your car, but it's really uh, redneck when you, you can't even cover your tires up. Amen. Spray around them like that. Uh, we're all part of the body. See? Now, look. Verse 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. I want to preach this morning on members of his body. The church is the body of Christ. And just like our physical body has all these members and every member has a purpose, so the church, Shining Light Baptist Church, a local church has a body. I want to say four things about this really quick. That the Lord put on my heart. I've been studying this up in Virginia this week. And number one, I'd like to say the body has many members, just like the human body. His body uh, has many members. We are bone of his bone. We are flesh of his flesh. Like a man said one time, said, uh, uh, he said, uh, Jesus is part of you. You don't leave him. When you go somewhere you shouldn't go, kids, you take him with you. Because he's part of you. You're part of him. 
you're a part of your body. You don't say, Jesus, stay outside. I'm going to the club tonight, and I'll catch you in the morning at church. No, you drag him in there. Like God said one time, he said, when you, the Lord's in your heart, so when you smoke cigarettes, you're blowing smoke in his face. I don't know about all that. Uh, but he's inside you. He's, he's part of you. Everything you do, everywhere you go, you are part of the body. Now, the church is like that. The church here this morning, we have big people. We have little people. We have uh, rich people. And I, well, I don't know. There's a few in here that does pretty good. Uh, and then we have poor people, plenty of them. We have educated people with college degrees in here, and we have people who, who dropped out of high school or couldn't even get a high school diploma. We have young kids in here, like them little ones that were singing up here a while ago, and then we have some that are six foot three and six foot four and all of that. We have some people uh, that are mammals and papals. We have some people in here that are grandkids. We have some people in here that are that are pretty, live in nice houses. We have people in here that live in, not. if you go to a church, listen to me, if you go to a church where everybody in that church is on a certain income bracket level or drives a certain amount, dollar amount of car, that is a fake church. That ain't a real church. A real church is where a man has a Mercedes sitting outside and right beside it is an old beat up pickup truck that's only held together by bumper stickers and the grace of God. That's right, that's right. I've been doing this a long time. It takes all kinds of people. I mean, you ought to, a real church, a real church has a rich lady sitting on the pew. Her dress is perfect, her eyebrows are perfect, her makeup is perfect, and she's sitting there and she's got on diamond rings and gold necklaces and right beside her is a bus kid wiped a booger on her dress. That's what a real church is. A real church. I know people say, well, if you go to that church, you have to live in a gated neighborhood. Or if you go to that church, you have to live, and that's not a real church. A real, the body has all kinds of members. We have people in here this morning. We had gold fingers over here on this piano. And she was playing that piano. She was playing. I can't do that. We had me over here, or the song leader's not here, uh, uh, trying to lead the singing. And uh, she can't do that. We had the choir up here singing. We have uh, you sitting here listening. We have people that's been out there working on buses while you were sitting in here and the Sunday school teacher was doing his job and the whole body works together. We have people in here that can do all kinds of things. We have people in here that's... Uh, uh, workers, carpenters, uh, mechanics, uh, plumbers. Uh, 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 Ronnie back there worked on our air conditioner the other day, and that's how come it feels so good in here. Raise your hand back there, Ronnie. Stay me heating and air conditioning in Nebo, North Carolina. There's your plug. And uh, uh, me and Ronnie's been friends for many, 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 many years. And uh, he's got our air conditioning going good, and I appreciate him. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's what a body does. Now, the body has many members. Number two. Listen carefully. Every member has a purpose. Every member has a purpose. Don't you let the devil or any of your kinfolk or some self-righteous Christian tell you that you are not important or the church don't need you. There is no such thing as a vestigial Christian. Tell you the truth, there ain't no such thing as a vestigial organ. Now, we'll talk about that just a little bit. They have, uh, the, the Bible said, you can't say, I have no need of thee. The hand can't say to the foot, I have no need of thee. Now, how many of y'all know what vestigial organs are? Raise your hand. These are uh, organs that they tell you has no use in the body. Now, let me tell you why they tell you that. The, uh, a vestigial organ means uh, non-functional, they think, organs which were functional and relate and are in, in animals and were functional in our ancestors. That means this. They tell you that your appendix and your tonsils and your uh, they they say your earlobe is a vestigial organ. And that is a remnant of what you used to be millions and millions and millions of years ago. Uh, the Kosick side, they that you tailbone. Uh, they tell you that your tailbone is a remnant of your ancestors who had a tail. Hard to say that with a straight face. 
But that's what I, and the reason they tell you you have vestigial organs in your body is because that's a great argument for evolution. And the doctors and the and the 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 world system preaches and teaches evolution. I preached on it last night up yonder in the service. We had a great time in the Lord. But the, the, the doctrine, let me say the religion. That's what evolution is, a religion. There's no evidence for evolution. Uh, nothing evolved. Everything didn't come from nowhere. As I told them last night, there are only four explanations for the whole blessed universe even being here, people. Only four. And if I had every paleontologist and every archaeologist and every geologist in the world in this room today and every professor of the universe University of North Carolina, Duke, Chapel Hill, NC State, Wake Forest, any of Maryland, Virginia, if they were all here today, they all believe one of these four theories. There ain't but four. And every scientist in the world believes one of these. Number one, it came out of nowhere by itself. Number two, it came out of nowhere by a divine act of creation. Number three, it always has been here. Eternity of matter didn't have a beginning. And number four, it ain't even here. You just think it is. You have to smoke a little dope to believe that fourth one. Now, that got popular back in the 70s when the hippies, you know, they said, man, we ain't even here, man, like northern reality. No, 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 you're here. You're here, trust me. Pinch yourself. You're here. We're here, brother. Now, there's only one out of them four postulates that are scientific, and it's number two. Uh, something can't come out of nothing. It can't. All them rocks and the mountain, you know how much they say the world weighs like uh, uh, 3,000 trillion metric tons? That's how much the world, I don't know how they figured that out. Uh, that's, a, that's a heavy thing, brother. And it's hanging out there on nothing. Nothing. And evolution tries to tell you, well, it's because we used to have a tail a long time ago. You know what we believe about that? <laughs> uh, it's, it's like Papa Smurf, Mama Smurf, and, and all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. They have now found that every what they call vestigial organ has a purpose. It sure does. It has a purpose. Your appendix, they throw it for you. You don't need your appendix. You don't need your appendix. You know, have them took it out. Won't hurt you a bit. They have found that the appendix, according to um, a study at John Hopkins University, ain't, and people ain't dumb, that serves as a, um, your appendix so protect Good germs. You know, there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. There's good germs and bad germs. It's supposed to be uh, to fight against bacteria with your immune system. And it is a rich blood supply in order uh, for your body and may have even to do with helping prevent some types of cancer. Now, can you do without your appendix? Yes. Is it vestigial? No. Just because science hadn't found out yet what it's there for, God put it there for a reason. Just call, They'll find out one of these days. They get caught up with the Bible once in about 1,500 years. Your tonsils, your tonsils. They say, no, it's a curse. We should have been born without tonsils. No, your tonsils has, it's got, has to do with the lymph node system in your body. It is a help fight against infection, according to the scientists at Edinburgh. And it's a good block there to keep kids from swallowing stuff they shouldn't swallow and a bunch of other stuff that they're not figuring out. Can you do without your tonsils? Yes. You say, well, Brother Danny, I'm not needed to church. Everybody, I can't do nothing. I'm just a tonsil. No, no, you, <laughs> you are needed. <laughs> I don't know if you're the tonsil in the body of Christ. Uh, uh, you say, I ain't nothing but an earlobe preacher. Well, bless God, I don't know what they're there for. It, it, ain't, to, it ain't to put a, a beer can ring in. Uh, uh, it's, there, it's there for a reason. It's there for a reason. I really don't know. Uh, but you'd look sort of, well, uh, male nipples, I ain't gonna talk about that. Uh, but they say that's a total vestigial organ. There's no reason. I mean, I don't know what the reason for it is, but you'd look weird without it. Some of you people's awful. The tailbone serves as a place to attach ligaments and, and tendons in your body that helps you sit straight and right. It's not vestigial. There's no such thing. 
You say, well, well uh, he had his tonsils took out and he ain't never missed. Listen, you can lose an arm. You can lose an arm and live the rest of your life and live a normal life. You can bust your teeth, you can drive a car, you can do about anything. Does that mean you never needed it? Does that mean it had no purpose? Does that mean your arm evolved from something you used to be? No. Uh, you, can lose, you can lose one eye and live the rest of your life pretty normal. You really can. Just because something, uh, you, you, just because you don't see, just because you don't feel like you have a purpose in this church, you have a purpose in this church. Just because you don't feel important does not mean you're important. You may help the digestive system. You may help uh, be able to hear. You may be able to help us sit up straight. Ladies and gentlemen, every member has a purpose. Every member has a purpose. We need you. We miss you when you're not here. We, have, we depend on you. I'd feel mighty stupid up here preaching and nobody here. We got a preacher. We got members. We got deacons. We got Sunday school teachers. We got singers. And all the body is one body. Number three. Here's the truth you see in this scripture. When one member suffers, the whole body suffers with it. The whole body suffers with it. This summer started out I had a rough summer on my left hand, y'all. I started out back early summer, I broke that little finger right there playing ball. Oh, Jim, I hit this boy, and he, I, I, I was going at this, this boy coming this way, and my little finger went way out like that, and I felt it pop. And I know it was broke because it stuck out there, still sticking out right there. And man, did that hurt. That's just my little finger, and I went, ow! And usually when I get hurt, I just keep going. I almost got sick to my stomach. You know that when you get there and you, you feel like you're going to throw up? And I, I shook it off for a little bit and kept playing. I went home, and that thing was sticking out right there. You can still see it right there. See that bone? See that and how straight? Look at that one. Like that. And boy, that thing hurt that night. Lord have mercy. That's my little finger. My little pinky finger. That's all it is. That don't seem important. But you know what? My whole body suffered with that thing. It wasn't but a few weeks later, me and him was down there at the pond. We got, the pond got over, over, uh, we had, had to have some work done on it, put a new pipe on it, and it was about that high too deep, and we had a little, little old uh, paddle boat, that little thing. Well, I had the saws on, the stupid thing, the battery went dead on it, so I got me a little hand saw, and, and I had my hand in the water, that same hand right there, and I had to hold that pipe, and I was just a sawing like this, sawing like that, and about that time, that thing slipped, and I went, zoom, and sawed right there. You can see the scar. It just started healing up the other day. I mean, brother, I cut it. I cut it. Right now, that's numb right there. No feeling. I must have cut a nerve or something. Didn't go to the doctor for either one of them. What's, what's a doctor going to do for you? Insurance companies are getting rich off people that go to the doctor when they have one little their nose needs to be blowed, so they go to the emergency room. You know people like that? I ain't going unless I got to. Especially if I got to, I will. But anyway, ain't no use going to cut yourself. Uh, I told Kelly, I said, give me some of them things, and we put it together. I mean, blood was squirting out of there. Woof, woof, like it was pumping. I, oh, boy. I've cut a nerve. I've cut a blood vessel. I've cut something. So we taped it up, and I'm telling you what that night... I was in pain. I had to put it up on a pillow. And she gave me them big old fat tine holes, them big and big in my finger. Two of them things like to choke me like horse pills. And I swallowed them things and I thought, well, maybe that'll help. And I, I woke up in the middle of the night going, oh! It wasn't just, I mean, I cut it. And all my members, so I stopped everything because that little member was suffering. Now listen to me. It ought to be our goal as a church when one person in here is hurting, we all hurt with them. Lord, have we got a long way to go. When somebody dies at the end of this church, there ought not to be one or two or maybe three people show up because it's your close friends. My foot goes to the funeral. My elbow goes to the funeral. 
My ear goes to the funeral. All the members suffer with it. When it comes your time to suffer, suffer, you're going to want people to care about you. I've had people say, not one person from the church, Brother Danny, I work with a bunch of heathen, and they took up an offering, gave me flowers, and come to see me, and nobody from the church came. That's a shame, brother. All the members suffer when somebody's sick. When somebody's in the hospital, you ought to hurt with them. Somebody's in the hospital. It's funny, buddy. When we're in the hospital, tell everybody to pray. Text everybody. Put it on the nose book. Tell everybody in the church to pray. I, I, I want prayer. I need prayer. I need prayer. But when it's somebody else saying, well, I'm sorry to hear that, and forget it, let's go do something we like. Every member here should learn to suffer with even the people that you're not real close friends. As a matter of fact, I think it's dangerous to have too close of friends all the time. Branch out a little bit, buddy. Talk to somebody, sit aside. Sometimes I think I ought to get up here sometime and make everybody over here sit over there and everybody over here sit over there and everybody just mix each other up. Y'all might get introduced to each other. You don't even know who's a visitor here. I say, shake their hand. I didn't know there was a visitor preacher. Well, it's cause all one of the members suffer, everybody suffers. Number four, number, this is last. Things get done when every member works together. Isn't that true? Your eyes have never built a building or a doghouse. You know what? You know what you're listening to this morning? You're listening to a Bible sermon from the Bible. You know how this came about? My heart longed for God to give me something for today. My brain thought it. My eyes read it. My fingers wrote it. My feet brought me up here. My heart pumped blood so I can stand up here. My lungs give me oxygen so I can uh, scream and holler. And you get the message. Every part doing its part. Wouldn't I look mighty stupid? Let's, let's have Miss Desi come. In a minute. And I want you to lean back against that wall over there and play the piano with your toes. How many give five dollars to see that right there? <laughs> well then she'd be uh, she wouldn't be gold fingers, she'd be twinkle toes. <laughs> if she could do that, buddy, we could get rich. Amen. I mean, there's people do it, I mean, you know, but not near as good as your finger. What if I got down here this morning and I said I'm going to walk on my hands. You don't believe I can do it, do you? Well, I really, I ain't practiced that in a long time. But I'm, I'm going to walk. My hands have got a little bit jealous lately because my feet get to take me everywhere I go. So I'm going to let my hands be feet and my feet be hands. Feet, open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's go. Turn your Bible there. I had to take my socks off. Socks and shoes. So my fingers... My feet, toes. Are you a little toe in the body of Christ? <laughs> Listen, a big toe ain't pretty. The ugliest thing, you know, especially a girl. You ever seen a girl with big old bony toes? Hide them things. Don't wear flip flops. Big old bony long feet on a girl looks weird. But them little short feet look weird too to me, honestly. A little bit like that. Now I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my shoes and socks off, and I'm gonna take my toes and turn the pages in the Bible. You say, brother Danny, that's silly. You're absolutely right. That's silly. That's about like uh, some people trying to be a missionary that ain't supposed to be a missionary. Some people trying to preach that ain't supposed to be preaching. Find out what God give you to do and do it. Some people give money. Plenty of it. They make money. I believe God gives people, certain people, the gift of making money so that they can help put the gospel out. Listen, we could build a building there. Wouldn't quit. Them kids, 
That's why I'm, I'm hoping Dax will win one of them beggings. <laughs> and the Lord will put it on his heart there out there in Nashville right now. And if you got to be backslid, you might as well do something for God with it. Ain't that right? And uh, uh, they're probably watching right now. Hey, Carrie. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, you hear me? Everybody's got a part. Everybody's got a part. Everybody's got a part. You say, what's my part, preacher? What, where you fit in, you, you keep, God will show you what you can do. Don't do to try to do. Look, this morning, we was here at 8 o'clock this morning. All right, them boys had to ride the bus because the bus captain's in Florida and Kelly's got a baby with 104. She was going to do it. 104 fever. So they rode the bus. The bus driver, George is here early this morning. Jason was here early this morning. The bus driver goes out there and cranks the bus. I get up here and fuss with everybody, raise money to pay for it. The church built the pain. The air conditioner was like talking about Ronnie a minute ago. The lights are on so they can have a good place to come in and hear the gospel. The bus driver drives that bus. The bus captain went out yesterday and tried to get all the kids to come. You see how different parts of the body work together? I can sit here all day long and say, birdhouse, birdhouse, birdhouse. And you'll be putting me over yonder in a room pretty soon if I keep doing that. Right? My eyes can't build a birdhouse. My hands can. My brain thinks it. My hands do what my brain tells it to. Bam! Bam! I can see it. I can touch it. And every part of my body does its part. There were four men one time in the Bible brought another man to Jesus. It took all four of them. If one of them guys would have dropped his corner, they couldn't have got done. If you drop your corner, we can't get the job done God wants us to get done. All the disciples spread out and preached the gospel. Noah and his sons, we assume, built the ark. Miss Desi played. We sang, the job gets done. Now listen to this, I'm through. Hebrews 13, 3 said, Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them. You know what that is? People in jail. Do you remember people in jail? I wrote letters to guys in jail just in the last couple of weeks. You know why? Because you ain't supposed to forget people like that. Might be you in there one of these days. I, I had a guy write me in jail, from jail the other day, and he said, nobody's come to see me but my sister. Nobody writes me. Nobody. Lord, in mercy, that'd be rough. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and they that suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Romans 12, 15, rejoice with them that rejoice, weep with them that weep. You know what a real child of God can do? We can go in the funeral home and sit down with somebody and say, Lord, in mercy, y'all. My heart breaks for you just sit there and hold her hand and weep with them for a little bit. That's what the body does. My whole body stopped everything and took care of that cut right there. It's barely getting better right now. I'm going to have a scar there. You can see it. I whacked it, brother. I ain't kidding you. But my whole body, now it's coming back. It's scarred, but it's coming back. Sometimes when one member messes up, everybody kicks them out because we don't want you here. You're not good and we don't want you around us and we're better than you are. You know what we all ought to do? Go to that person and help them get back in there and nourish them back to health so they can get to where they need to be. Amen. We're all members of one body. I want you to stand by your head, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You say, Brother Danny, I'd like to be a member of the body. And we talk about church member, I, and, you sh and you should do that too, but that's not what I'm talking about this morning. A part of a working body. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name.
Lord, that you'd help every person in this room today to say, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to enlist, preacher. I'm joining up. I want to become a part of the body. And Lord, they know I'm not talking about joining this church. I mean, that too, I'd love to see that happen. But Lord, you know, they, they need to know about being the member of the body of Christ and what they need to be doing, what I need to be doing. Forgive us where we failed you. Forgive us for not caring about the least little member, little boy, little girl who's hurting, who's in trouble, who's had a death in the family. Lord, help us to suffer with them that suffer. Help us to weep with them that weep. Help us to care for those that have cares. Help us to rejoice with them that have rejoicing. We'll thank you for it. Now, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Some praying this morning. You need to come this morning and give your heart to the Lord. You need to come this morning and say, Preacher, I want to be a part of the body of Christ. You want to come? I'm not talking about members of Shining Light Baptist Church. That, that'd be good too if you want to do that. But you need to come this morning and say, Preacher, I'm going to find out what I can do and do it by the grace of God. You, you can get a whole lot more done when the whole body's functioning right. You can hobble in on crutches. You can go in with one hand tied behind your back. That's what I feel like we're doing here about half time. But it sure is a blessing when every member does their part. In giving, in attendance, in singing, in working, in witnessing, in praying, in, in giving, everything. Do your part. Do your part. Are you doing your part? Amen. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. You bless these on the altar. God, give them grace. Uh, Lord, to live for you and serve you. Help us, Lord, to know what we can do and do it by the grace of God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for your blessings on our church. I pray it would grow and glow and go and prosper for the glory of God. And we'll thank you for what you do. Help us all to be members of that one body. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. So I'm still praying this morning. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord for these girls praying. Others. Amen. Amen. I pretty much, by this point in my life, I pretty much know what I can do and what I can't do. And I'm not going to waste my time trying to do something that I can't do. I don't want to be a Greek teacher. I have no desire. Don't want to study Greek. Don't want to be a Greek teacher. The Lord calls somebody to do that, that's fine. That's not my bag, brother. I, what I've done here this morning, that's my part in the body. That's what I'm made for. I was born to serve the Lord. Find out where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing and do it for the glory of God. Amen. All right?